What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. It's been a minute since I've talked much about passive income and I think part of it is because I realized that when I spoke about it, based on some of the comments that I got, which you'll see flashing by below, some folks were not really appreciative of the content I was posting. Maybe seeing it as being misleading that like everyone could just magically make six figures in their sleep. And that's not what I mean by these videos at all. But I thought it would be helpful to take a realistic look at what it actually entails to generate passive income. And I'm talking about like big passive income, like six figures plus. Let's get into it in this video. Let me maybe burst your bubble. There is no such thing as completely 100% passive income, meaning you do zero work and you just earn income. There are some things that start to approach passive income. If you have a trust fund that you inherited from somebody else and you're just living off of the passive dividends of that trust fund, you're still earning that income from someone's work somewhere in history. I found this New York Times article about passive income quite helpful. Here's a quote from that article. What people often call quote passive income is income that isn't dependent on a single paycheck or employer. In some cases, without understanding the difference, people are talking about leveraged income putting in time and effort in advance to earn recurring profits from selling, say, an online course or ebook, or additional revenue from a side hustle. That is more work. So to clear the air, this video is really about leveraged income, meaning you're generating income from work that you did before rather than work that you're doing right now. I'm always helped by real life examples of what someone's talking about. So I'll tell you a little bit about where I'm at with my business, private practice skills and my whole income situation. I started private practice skills back in July of 2018, which feels like a thousand years ago. I spent about 20 to 40 hours a week making content for private practice skills and I didn't receive my first first bit of income until August of 2019, exactly one year later. And in 2021, I broke six figures, my third full year of private practice skills, and I generated $105,000 of revenue. For 2023, we're gonna be bumping into the multiple six-figure land for my total income between both businesses, working part-time. It might sound very sweet, <laughs> and it is. It's the best. I love it. There's kind of two major myths I'll say that I'd like to debunk in this video that are often perpetuated about passive income, AKA leveraged income. On the one hand, a lot of folks talk about just how easy it is to generate passive income. And I'd like to debunk that myth because you do have to really put in a lot of work, especially at the beginning, especially when you don't know if this business is gonna work. And especially when you don't have any income coming in from your work at all. Generally speaking, if you're wanting to generate big numbers of passive income, you're going to have to work a lot, especially in the beginning. Now, I think that part probably isn't so surprising. I think a lot of us can get on board with this idea that it takes a lot more work to generate passive income than some people seem to advocate. But on the flip side, I also hear a lot of folks who say that no matter how far into it you are, it's always going to be a grind to keep generating passive income. And though, absolutely you could continue the grind in order to keep generating passive income. From my personal, purely anecdotal experience, I'm hardly working right now and I am genuinely just in maintenance mode, holding steady at about the same income that I've generated and I just focus on doing stuff that I want to do rather than focusing on like trying to multiply my passive income. A lot of folks who are pitching courses to people in my position are saying, you know, how to grow your side hustle from six figures to seven figures. But I don't need seven figures. I mean, if you're like me, most of us would be happy to just increase our income by 50%, let's say. For most of us, that's enough to kind of go from, oof, I wish I could have a little bit more money to save each month to, cool, I'm saving my money, I'm investing it, and I can take a vacation. The next piece that I'd like to emphasize in this video is that most people who end up having success with passive income go through several failed business attempts before they arrive at the one that's successful. And I am no exception to that. I've started a lot of businesses over the years. It might be closer to like eight businesses that I've started since 2009. The only ones that I'm currently investing in are my therapy practice and private practice skills. I got two. <laughs> I am imagining that there's at least some people who say like, okay, I'm gonna make this passive income thing like Marie or whoever, and it doesn't work out for whatever reasons and go up. Oh, I guess it's not for me. The reality is it might take you several more attempts in order to land on the thing that is for you. Okay, so a piece that I'd like to look a little 
little bit more closely at when it comes to generating passive income is just how much of a grind it tends to be in those early days before you even see a dime. So I thought it might be helpful to look at the analytics of some of my content in the early days. I've leaned since day one heavily in posting at least one weekly video to YouTube. That's where I started. And then in time, I also built my own website where I posted weekly blogs that were leaning heavily into SEO in order to be found online. Now you can see I posted for months and got close to zero views. It wasn't until December 2018 that my view count started kind of creeping upwards a little bit. And even then we're talking small numbers. If we zoom out a little further on my lifetime view count, it wasn't until the beginning of the pandemic, honestly, uh, March 2020, that things really started picking up. So at this point, I'm more than a year and a half into making at least weekly videos. It was kind of a fluke that I had a video that was sort of quote, viral for me, meaning compared to my usual average, I had a video that got way more views and it was because of the pandemic. And I started posting in real time how I was making adjustments for my practice in order to adjust for the pandemic. And people were searching for that. I just kind of hit it at the right time. So luck, is also a variable that's really important to acknowledge. Now I touched on something a moment ago that I want to emphasize in this video also, and that's that starting your own kind of online creator business is just not a great fit for a lot of people. So it's really important to ask if your personality is a good fit for what you're setting out to do. Most likely, if you're setting out to do this for the first time, you're going to have to learn how to do a bunch of stuff, or you're gonna have to have funds already to pay someone to do a bunch of stuff for you. So practically for me, that looked like spending many hours a week watching YouTube videos, reading blogs, trying stuff, breaking my website. I'm starting a website for private practice skills. Accidentally, it now comes to this page. There's me, but also a bunch of other stuff not related to my website. Messing up Final Cut Pro again and having to start a video from scratch. Your personality really has to be a good fit for learning new things and investing heavily into that challenging learning curve and enjoying that challenge again, or you, have to have enough money to pay someone to do that stuff for you. I did enjoy those early days. Like I loved getting home at like 7 p.m. from seeing therapy clients and then cracking open my laptop to write a blog post or edit a video until 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight. That was fun for me. Like it was a fun challenge. So the point of this video isn't to bash online businesses like mine or to say that you shouldn't pursue it. I'm just hoping to offer more realistic expectations than a lot of what I see represented out there of what it entails to start a business like this. And if it's a good fit for you, I hope that you feel empowered to give it a try, knowing what you're getting yourself into. Now, if you clicked on this video because your main motivator was to just kind of increase your income quickly and I burst your bubble, sorry. <laughs> for most people, the the easiest way to increase their income is to either get promoted at their job, change jobs, or if you're in private practice, then doing things like increasing your rate or coming off insurance panels, things like that. I think I have a video all about how to build wealth as a therapist, so if I can find it, I'll link to it below. Well, hopefully this video brought us all back to planet Earth and acknowledging that there is no true passive income. Work is involved in making income no matter how you slice it. So hopefully this helps you manage your expectations about passive income and make more informed decisions about what you'd like to do with your career. And before we close, I'd like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video. Therapy Notes is an all-encompassing practice management system with tools to help you with scheduling, notes, billing, so much more, and they have a HIPAA secure telehealth platform included for all users. If you'd like to check out Therapy Notes, you can get two months to try it for free with no commitment just by clicking the link in the description of this video. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below if there's any concerns you have about generating passive income or lessons you've learned if you are generating passive income. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well.